Hello there. We'll dissect the current situation of NEO stock and delve into vital market updates. We'll also touch upon other related stocks such as Tesla, Apple, the QQQ, and NVIDIA, providing insights into potential trends and crucial indicators to track. I want to break down what's going on with NEO stock and talk about some very, very important updates. I'm also going to talk about what's going on with NEO Apple, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers and talk about what the chart is suggesting and some other important levels to watch for. But before I do anything like this anyways, let's break down what's going on with the market and NEO and many other stocks. But for the time being, if you look at NEO, it has dropped by 1.73% in a day, and it hasn't actually been able to achieve a breakout above 200 EMA, looking a little bit weak, but so far it's not necessarily that bad. And the reason for that is because NEO is still in this range, the support around that 10.5 area, and the resistance is very close to this about 11.5 zone. So we're just stuck going back and forth, and back and forth, and there's a very, very high probability NEO is going to be stuck in this range for an extended period of time. But if NEO could hold above the 200, that's going to give it the chance to get that breakout. Now when it comes to data affecting the markets for tomorrow. As a reminder, we have the PMI report coming out 15 minutes after the market opens then 30 minutes after open. We have the services PMI, so we have more and more data for the first 15 and 30 minutes of the day followed by a Fed speaker near the very end of the day as well. So we have a Fed speaker and we also have other things expect some high volatility for the first 30 minutes. And besides that, NEO is still all right. Now when it comes to NEO, we have this news that came out. The NEO has 134 NEO houses, 286 NEO spaces, 301 NEO service centers, and about 1,800 power swap stations with over 3,000 power charger stations. So very interesting in total, not bad for NEO standards. And then I just want to remind you all that NEO had over 19,000 deliveries in August. It's not really helping them that much for the time being, if you look today to see if it helps outperform the market. So far, it will be seen, NEO is not really doing that. The volume is still very low, so it dropped on low volume, Nothing too aggressive or crazy. 37 million was the volume, and we're actually looking at the current price versus short volume. It's also dropping, which is a decent sign. Now finally, I just want to add that Mizaho is still telling us to buy NEO, so we're getting some good buy ratings. And NEO's price-press ratio is starting to curl as NEO is starting to gain a little bit of strength compared to before. So NEO is starting to show more signs that it's trying to base, Wednesdays tend to be one of the best days of the week as we're green 56% of the time historically. And finally, when you look at the short interest, it started to go up just a little bit as we started September 14 million NEO shares were shorted, but nothing too crazy. So now let's talk about this chart. How is this looking in my opinion? Well, there's a nice accumulation phase that's developing but NEO is not really doing that great because we're not able to break above the 200 on the 4-hour time frame. Now the 200 on the hourly is also very close, also as the daily, and we want to see this thing basically get this bullish cross on the PPO on the daily. So it's kind of like in this accumulation phase, trading sideways for a little bit longer before we get some kind of breakout later on. Is there potential for NEO to break out? Yes, there is, but for now. Let's just talk about how this inverse head and shoulders develops. So it's still trying to hold up nothing too bad. And for the time being, it's still looking quite decent. However, as long as it stays in this range, the range is between 10.5 and about 11.3. We've been going back and forth and back and forth in this range for many, many weeks. So I do believe there's a possibility of Neo filling this 30 minutes imbalance, coming down to about 10.5 retesting that area than just trading sideways, and I think that's what's going to happen for tomorrow. Despite that, as for Tesla, Tesla did something surprising and actually got a very nice recovery. Came almost to the highest that we saw previously, so still trying to hold up despite the fact that we're just waiting. If tomorrow you want to see if Tesla can hold these levels, if it manages to hold then, we could get a bullish cross on the PPO and Tesla 
could maintain this range between 260 and 255 for longer. But if Tesla fails to do so and starts dropping with the market, 255. If that fails, expect it to come all the way down to 252, if not 250. What do I think is looking more likely on Tesla? Well, the thing about Tesla is let's just zoom out of the chart just to talk more about this. The daily overall is still a little bit more kind of mixed. We were about to get the sell up, but we came right back up on the daily, so it's still very indecisive. It's still kind of in the middle right over here, but it's going to be testing this resistance. We want to see if it could break or not. And then on the weekly, it still isn't looking that bad. It's kind of flat on the weekly, nothing too horrible. On the monthly, it's about to get a bullish cross on the PPO, so there is some potential for it, but that's not as huge just yet because it could take a little longer to develop. So I think it's going to likely just range trade for a bit, go back and forth and back and forth and consolidate. And we might just see a very flat day tomorrow as it's hitting this very, very tough resistance. This resistance stopped Tesla quite a bit in the past. Unless we manage to break above 260 and hold it, then we're going to turn more bullish, but for now. I do expect some sideways price action. I think that's what's going to happen to Tesla. For Apple, if you go and check, we have a bearish divergence on the 4-hour time frame. If you go there and take a look, Apple has set a new all-time high. And on the 30-minute time frame, there's also a bearish divergence, even a quadruple bearish divergence that is still developing. This makes me think that there are high chances of a rug pull happening soon. I believe that for the time being, it might try to stay up and fill the gap around 190, which could result in a little upward movement in Apple. But even if Apple hits 190 and tries to fill the gap as we approach the big event, there's likely going to be a big sell-off either a little before or after the big event on September 12th. As there are three and quadruple bearish divergences there, that's my only warning for all the Apple investors out there. The triple Q is once again we have a possible head and shoulders looking kind of flat right now, but there is potential for it to come down to 375 in the future. I think there's a good chance of that happening on the four hour time frame. However, we have this accumulation phase, so it's still indecisive, but we have a bearish cross on the PPO, which is favoring the bears a bit more. The overall formation could be a nice accumulation phase that's forming, but we could be in a phase or a part of the phase where we kind of like cool off a bit first before we continue higher. So overall this thing could push a lot higher, but for the short term, we might see some downside. Because on the 4 hour chart, we haven't curled just yet. We need to hold above 382 to turn more bullish. We have to hold it, and then this thing can start. But overall, we have a slight downtrend. If it continues to break down, we will be looking to retest 376, and there's a good chance of that potentially happening. NVIDIA is looking a little weak on the 4-hour time frame. It still is favoring the bears a bit more, and there is potential for it to come down to this imbalance. But before we talk about that, let's talk about 475. That has to be tested first. So the best thing to do is just watch these levels and be as calm clone collected as possible. As far as NEO goes, it looks like it's going to test 10.5 tomorrow, then bounce, and we're going to see it just range trade for a bit. I think the ODS greatly favor that. Lots of sideways price action between 10.5 and about 11, maybe about 11 flats, and we're just going to go back and forth and back and forth for most of the day. So that's what I'm predicting for NEO sideways price action. I also gave you guys an update on NIO Tesla the QQQ, and a couple of others. Hopefully this video was helpful, and I'm going to be watching to see NEO retest 10.5 to maybe bounce off that and push back to 11 and get a very flat day. That's what I'm predicting for tomorrow. I think the price action may be boring for the next week or so, but things will improve over time for NEO, so long as they continue to hold up. Anyways, thank you all so much for listening. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more stock predictions and market insights. Remember to turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. 
Happy investing and see you in the next video.